Well, there was some chatter before the draft that Laramie Tunsil would slide in this draft, and that is what is happening right now. Ten minutes before tonight's draft, on Laramie Tunsil's verified Twitter account, a picture surfaced of somebody smoking. You know, it's unfortunate the events of, of tonight. That's not who he is. The Miami Dolphins select Laramie Tunsil. Somebody hacked my account. So was there an exchange of money between you and your coach? No, nah, I wouldn't say all that. Hey, you're saying those messages were not messages? Hold on, the message you talking about from, uh, oh, oh, no. Those, those true, like I said, I made a mistake of that happening and it happened. So, was an exchange between you and your coach for money? I have to say, yeah. The draft is supposed to be such a special night for these guys. Not the case there for Laramie Tunsil. Herm Edwards here, now with us. Herm, how we doing? I'm well. Yeah? I'm well. We want to get your thoughts on this. Would you still have drafted him? Well, I think you got to have a plan if you draft him. And I think going in, he had some red flags. Uh, you knew that. Uh, th this is not surprising. Now, the, the video is a little bit shocking to a lot of people. But, but I think if you've done your homework, and Miami has done that, along with a lot of other teams, uh, you felt like this guy had some red flags. Even before the video, people were saying he was dropping a little bit. And, and, and why? Because there were some concerns. Injury for being one and maybe some things he did socially off the field you were a little bit nervous about, but I think Miami did his due diligence uh, and said, you know what, we'll have a plan for this guy. But he has to be a part of the plan. He, he has to look at himself and say, look, uh, I play a game where if, if I deal with marijuana, if, if that's one of my social appetites uh, and I get tested, I'm going to affect a lot of people. Now, on the other side of it, for me as a head coach, that's one part of it. But the big issue, the, the real big issue is there's a lot of drama in this young man's life. There's a lot of people that are lining up and waiting for him to get drafted. How do you deal with that drama? I mean, that, that's even going to be more uh, a big part of this. The marijuana is one thing. You know you get suspended. Okay, that's, that's flat. Athletes know. You do marijuana, whether we believe it or not, that's a rule in our league. That's a rule in sports. I'd be naive, and anybody else would be naive if you don't think athletes smoke marijuana, because they do. But you get tested in this league. If you get caught, get yourself in trouble. So that, that, that's part of it. But the other part, the, the family members, the drama, that's the bigger issue, in, in my opinion, because now he has money. And with money brings lots of friends, new acquired associations, friends, people that feel like, you know what, you owe me this because I helped you when you were in junior high school. All these things become a part of it. How does he handle that? He didn't have to handle it in college because he didn't have any money. But now he's got a lot of money. And everybody wants a piece of this money. And they're going to come up, they're going to line up on this guy. And that's what you're going to have to work and work him through. The athletic ability alone, he's going to be a good player. He was a good enough player to deal with in college. Didn't have any money to pay anybody. But now, all of a sudden, you got to deal with that aspect of it, which is very difficult. Mm. Stephen A. Coach, I appreciate your comments, man. You know how much I love you, and you know you always uh, provide that adult perspective, and I really appreciate that. I'm going to take this a level further, and I want you to chime in and okay. feel free to talk with Skip and Molly about it. Skip, Molly, this resonates to another level because what Coach just highlighted is significant enough, but rarely do you find a situation where somebody blatantly tries to cost you money. That's where this changes. Usually you got hanger-ons, and they want you to take care of them because they're your friends, they're your family, they're in the neighborhood, and I keep telling you about some cats that come from certain neighborhoods, and they wouldn't have made it out of there if it were not for some of the people who helped them along the way because of violence and a lot of other things that are going on. You wouldn't have been allowed to to star as an athlete. You would forget the distractions. If you weren't one that had the, uh, that was inclined to be helpful and be an assistance to those who were looking to help you along the way, you might not make it out of there. So you can't forget that in terms of, uh, with some of these guys as it pertains to being able to go home. But where coach pointed out something that I need to piggyback off of and elaborate further on is the stepdad. I, all, I talked about that at the top of the show, Skip and Molly. I'm going to bring it up again while Coach is here. According to the reports, when Laramie Tunsil got into the fight with his stepdad, it was his stepdad 
that told folks he left with an agent, which obviously is not permissible according to NCAA laws. So you have a situation where you might have some hanger-ons that want you to make that money. They just want some of it. But now he's got somebody in his life, arguably, presumably, that didn't want him to make the money. That was, what, you know, and so now you think about what transpired where his draft stock ultimately dropped and it's projected that it may have cost him $12 million. The reason why that's such a, a poignant point to bring up, this video came out minutes before the draft. Minutes. That means it was plotted. It was a calculated move to sabotage this guy's career. Other people hanging around so you can, yeah, you might not like that. That may not be a good thing. But my God, at least they want you to get paid so they can get some of it. But he's got people in his life somewhere. And to me, coach, I think this needs to be, I think even more than football, Skip and coach, I think even deeper than that, it's important for him to find out who the hell leaked that video. Yeah. I agree. Because you got to get them out your mm -hmm. life. Yeah, no, you no. got to find out who did that because they are trying, they are on a mission to destroy your dream. They don't want you to get paid. They ain't looking for a handout. They're trying to prevent you from getting paid. More so than before he plays a football game. Over the next few weeks, if I was Laramie Tunsil, I would be on a mission. I got to find out who did that. Come hella high water to make sure they are out of my life. Because they're trying, there are some somebody's trying to take this guy down. Yeah. And, and he, who knows what links he, they'll go through to do it. You make a great point, Stephen, and, and I think they probably about they have an idea. They got an of idea. Course. They got, of course. They got a does. little bit of an idea. Of course he does. Okay. Uh, we we Absolutely. know that. And we we're, we're, we're we're taking them really behind the curtain now with the conversation we're having. But That's he right. makes a great point in the fact that, you know, when you're a head coach, you realize this. And um, think about Miami. Adam Gase mm -hmm. has the same agent as Tunsil, and Jimmy Saxon. So th that helped. And Jimmy probably called him up and said, hey, look, coach, you know, they, they said, okay, we, we, we got a plan for this guy. But there's going to come a point, and I've always told players, that have this situation, how much does it cost? How much does it cost you? Does it cost you $500,000 to pay everyone off and say, you know what? Debt is paid. You guys, you guys have gotten me here. I'm good now. Now I got to move on. It's hard. It's hard because Stephen H. has mentioned it's hard. These guys have been with you for a long time, certain situations. And some people have no idea what these guys have lived through. Not on their own accord. You know, children can't choose their parents, can't choose the situations they grow up in at times. But now comes the time you got to make the decision. And it might cost you some money, but that's okay. Now you've paid your debt, and then you got to move on with your career. He's got to decide somewhere in his life, you know what, do I want to have a career or do I not want to have a career? Mm -hmm. It's a hard decision when you think there's emotion involved in this. Most fans don't understand that, but that's what some of these well, kids coach? have to deal with. Yes, sir. Coach, I told Skip this story a, a long time ago. There's a player that still plays in this league, in the NBA. And one of his friends, and I've never told his name and I never will. Right. He was a star. And one of his friends got in trouble. He went to the police station, bailed him out of jail, took him outside, and handed him a suitcase with $250,000 in cash yeah. in it shook his hand and said, it's over. We are done here. Yep. I can't allow you to bring every all of us down. That's right. It's the only player to this day that I know for a fact did something like that. That might, unfortunately, that kind of stuff may be what it takes. Mm. I'm going to take this one other direction. Sure. Coach will appreciate. I did like the way the kids stood up last night with no direction, no guidance, under fire, on the hot seat, and he did own his transgressions. He was sweating bullets, but oh, no he doubt. owned it, man. Yeah. And, and he just looked it in the eye and said, yes, you got me. And, and it redeemed him in my eyes a little bit. So Molly asked us a question to open the show. Mine too. Would, yeah, thank you. 
w would we have taken him higher in the draft? And, and I finally resolved, I, I, it's so many red flags, I, I guess, even though I'm a risk taker, I don't know if I could have taken this right. risk. And then I felt hypocritical when I said that because I covered the 1990s Dallas Cowboys. The day was different. The day is different today yes. because of social media. Social media, that's the, right. The scrutiny on this league is extreme and intense, and the, the uh, responsibility to be role models is intensified. Yes. But, but let me tell you, I wrote books about the 1990s Cowboys that should have won four straight Super Bowls and did win three out of four. They had 15 or 20 Laramie Tunsils on the team, trust me, and beyond Laramie Tunsil. But they had two father figures in Jimmy Johnson and Barry Switzer who somehow kept that group barely within bounds. Michael Irvin, as out of bounds as he could get off the field, somehow on game day, he kept everybody barely in bounds. And their motto was, play hard, party hard. And the, Jimmy's motto was, show up on time on Sunday and play hard. And, and I'll, I'll have your back, okay? So how did that work? You know, like I look at this and I think they, they would have crawled for Laramie Tunsil because he is, this is Hall of Fame talent. They, they had him in Dallas, that they, they, like right. Eric Williams was a troubled kid. But you want to talk about a talent at right tackle who, who could dominate Reggie White when he went up against him? He could. He dominated Reggie White in playoff games. My point is they took all these, these guys and they just said, we will deal with this. Yes. Okay, is, you probably wouldn't have flown that route. I, I, you, you just said I've no. dealt with some ones okay. in my in, in my right. career as a coach. Yeah, and you understand it. And, okay, and, and it's but you got it. You got to have a plan, and it, it it's it it's a hard job. But I've always said this uh, when I became a head coach: if you build better men, you build good football players because they make better decisions I, off the field and on the field. Yeah, but it's work. It's on Tuesday when the players are supposed to be off. Mm -hmm. They're not off. They're coming to visit you. You're having a little chat time with them. Mm -hmm. You always have a conversation with guys like this. You got to have a good locker room, too. You got to have some veterans around there that can help you to make sure that when, he, when he leaves the building, is he all right? You know, you're always checking in. It's work. It's more than just X's and O's if you're going to take on this, you know, this type of player. And that's, that's part of it. Some guys say, I don't want to do it. Yeah, coach. Some guys say, no, nope, I ain't doing it. Take that time. No. That's for sure. Gotcha. But I, I love the advice you said earlier because we know it's only going to get harder. New level, new devil. Oh boy. Right? Yep. Herm, you're staying put. Okay. It was a rough night for Laramie Tunsil, and it will continue to be because sometimes the NFL draft just gets really tricky. Yo, Stephen A., hit it. Let's go. This speech is my recital. I think it's very vital to rock. A rhyme that's right on time. It's tricky. Here we go. It's tricky to rock. A rhyme to rock. A rhyme. That's right on time. It's tricky. Tricky, 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 tricky. It's tricky to rock. A rhyme to rock. A rhyme. That's right on time. It's tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky.